Hello, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, KO Math. Today I'm gonna share with you a technique that will let you solve each of these inequalities probably in 10 seconds. Let's begin. Consider this first inequality, x times x minus 1 times x plus 2 less than 0. If I'm going to solve this inequality, I'm going to draw a real line and divide it into 1, 2, 3. It has uh, three zeros, 1, 2, 3. The zeros are 0, 1, negative 2. The signs must be positive, negative, positive, negative. And I'll get the answer, which is negative infinity to negative 2 union with 0 to 1. Note here that the scaling of the real line is uh, incorrect, but in solving polynomial inequalities using this method called uh, the sine diagram or sine graph method, you only need to make sure that the zeros of this polynomial on the left, okay, which are 0, 1, and negative 2, are arranged in increasing order from left to right. Okay? So don't place the negative 2 on the right of 0 or 1 on the left of 0. We use these zeros of the polynomial on the left to divide the real line into open subintervals. And these signs over the real line are the signs of the values of the polynomial on the left. Usually in the class, you are taught to determine these signs by choosing a test value from each interval. So for example, in each interval, you choose, let's say, 2. From this interval, you choose 1 half. This interval, you choose negative 1. And from this sub-interval, you choose negative 3. And to determine the sign from each uh, interval, you plug in this 2 here okay, to the polynomial. Okay, and you'll get positive 2 and then times a positive number. 2 minus 1 is a positive number times a positive number. You don't have to compute for the exact value. You only need to determine the sign of the value. So you know it's positive times positive times another positive number. You'll get a positive number. Now, if uh, 1 half okay, is plug in, okay, uh, for x in this uh, polynomial, you'll get a positive one half positive number times a negative number times a positive number, and that will give you a negative product. So similar explanation when you plug in negative one and negative three. And to determine the solutions from this uh, sign diagram, since we want this product to be less than zero, so we choose the subintervals where the sign of this polynomial is negative. So this uh, subinterval here and then this one. So therefore, we got the answer, which is negative infinity to negative 2 union with 0 to 1. You might be given an equivalent inequality uh, which is written in a different form. So, for example, uh, you may be asked to solve for x cubed plus x squared less than 2x. Now, to solve this one, the first step is to make one side of the uh, inequality equal to 0. So, we move the 2x to the left-hand side of the inequality. So make sure that you change the sign of the 2x from positive to negative. So the common mistake of students in solving this inequality is to divide both sides of the inequality by x. So we cannot do that because we don't know the sign of x, whether it's positive or negative. And if it is negative, if you divide an inequality by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality symbol. So when you're solving inequality, avoid multiplying or dividing both sides of inequality by a variable term unless you know the sign of the variable term. So here we make one side of the inequality 0 and then we find the zeros of the left hand side. And it's easy to find the zeros, the x values that will make it 0 by uh, factoring it out completely. And here we can factor the left hand side, first factor the GCF which is x, x times x squared plus x minus 2 less than 0. But the quadratic expression can still be factored, so we can write it down as x minus 1 times uh, x plus 2 
less than zero. And as you can see from here, this uh, inequality is just equivalent to this uh, inequality. So therefore, the solutions are the same. And the solution set for this one is still the interval negative infinity to negative to union with zero to one. Now, how can you determine easily the signs here? If the polynomial on the left can be factored into powers of linear factors, linear means it's in the form ax plus b, where of course a and b are real numbers, but a is not equal to zero, then uh, in this case, you have uh, x times x minus one times x plus two. So all of these uh, three factors okay, are linear factors then we can determine whether the sign changes at a zero of the polynomial based on its multiplicity, which is just the power of the linear factor. Here, the multiplicity of this zero is one, which is the power of x. The multiplicity of one is the power of x minus one, so that is also one, and the multiplicity of negative two is also one, which is the power of x plus two. Now, if the multiplicity is add, the sign changes at that zero. In our problem, since the powers of all the linear factors are add, all are equal to one, so therefore the sign changes okay at 1 at 0 and at negative 2 so if you know already the sign okay in the rightmost sub interval which is very easy to find okay in all inequalities so here we have positive then we have here alternating signs so it changes sign at 1 so from positive to negative and then again it changes sign at 0 so from negative to positive it changes sign at negative 2 so from positive to negative now, what if the multiplicity is even? It's like you have here a power 2 or a power 4 and so on. We're going to have such problems later. In this case, if you have a multiplicity which is even, the sign doesn't change. Using this technique, we can already solve the remaining inequalities easily. So let's move to the second problem. So if you want to solve this one, then just draw a real line. Okay, so here you have uh, three zeros. Okay, so you divide it into sub intervals. What are those uh, zeros? So you have here zero, you can put the zero here. You have negative one half. Okay, so the x value that will make this second factor equal to zero is negative one half. So negative one half must be on the left of zero. And the x value that will make a 3x minus 4 equal to 0 is positive uh, 4 thirds. So that number should be on the right of 0. Now, since the powers of these uh, three linear factors are all add numbers, all of them are equal to 1, we expect that the signs will be alternating. Okay. So here, if you can determine already the sign in this rightmost uh, sub-interval, which is very easy to determine because if you choose, for example, here uh, x equals 10, you know that this is a negative number, negative 50, times a positive number times a positive number. So you'll get a product which is negative, and since it is alternating signs, you'll get plus, minus, and plus. And since we're looking for x values that will make this product greater than or equal to 0, then it is greater than 0 if its sign is positive. So we choose this positive one and then this positive one. So therefore, our answer will be uh, negative uh, infinity okay, to negative one half union with four thirds uh, union with zero to four zero to four thirds if we're given a streak greater than inequality but in this case we're looking for x also wherein this polynomial is equal to zero because it should be greater than or equal to zero now if you have greater than or equal to zero the technique here is you just include these zeros of the polynomial because these are the values that will make the polynomial zero so therefore we have to include negative one half in our answer also zero 
and four thirds. So our final answer in this case is negative infinity to negative one half, including negative one half, union with zero, including zero, to four thirds, including four thirds. Now let's consider this uh, third inequality. So this is very easy to solve because all the powers of the linear factors are all add numbers. You have 1, 3, and 5. So therefore, when we draw the sine graph, the signs of this polynomial in the subintervals will be alternating. To find the solution, so we draw a real line and then the zeros of this uh, polynomial is positive 2, negative 4, and positive 1. So we divide this uh, real line using these zeros. So we have here uh, three zeros, negative 4, positive 1, and 2. And it's very easy to determine the sign in this uh, rightmost subinterval. When you take, for example, 5, this is 5 minus 2 is positive times a positive number times another positive number. So the sign of the polynomial will be positive in this interval. And then alternating signs, negative, positive, and negative. And since we're looking for values of x that will make this greater than 0, so we have to choose the positive signs. Okay, So we have to choose this one and this one. So therefore, our answer, the set, the solution set for this inequality is negative 4. So we have here negative 4 to 1 union with 2 to positive infinity. Let's now consider this next inequality. So here, because the power of x minus 3 and x plus 5 are add numbers, so we know that the value of the sign of this polynomial changes sign at negative 5 and at positive 3. But since the power of x here is an even number, so we know that the sign of this polynomial doesn't change at x equals 0. So when we draw our sine graph, so we have here, again, we have uh, three zeros. So we divide this into subintervals using the zeros. The zeros are negative 5, 3, and 0. So we have negative 5, 3 and 0. And uh, uh, again, it's very easy to determine the sign here. You can choose, for example, x equals 4. This is positive times a positive number times a positive number. So therefore, the sign of the polynomial is positive in this interval. Now, we know that the polynomial changes sign at positive 3. So therefore, this must be negative. But it doesn't change sign at 0 because the power is an even number. So therefore, this will stay negative. But now, since the power okay, of uh, x plus 5 is positive 3, so we know that the polynomial changes sign at negative 5. So therefore, the sign here will be positive, And we're looking for values that will make this polynomial greater than 0. So we choose here the uh, positive signs. So we have here positive and then positive. So therefore, our answer, the solution set for this inequality will be negative infinity to negative 5 union with 3 to positive infinity. Now, what if uh, we're given greater than or equal to instead of uh, strictly greater than? So what if we're given 10x squared times x minus 3 times x plus 5 raised to 3 greater than or equal to 0? Of course, our answer here should be the similar to this one, but we have to include all the zeros of the polynomial. Okay, so we have to include all the zeros. So the answer here will be negative infinity to negative 5 union with 3 to infinity. But don't forget to include the other 0, which is x equals 0. So this is union with set containing 0. You may write this uh, set, a singleton set, as a closed interval 0 to 0. Okay, so the common mistake of students here is to just include these uh, endpoints. 
negative 5 and 3, but there is another 0 of the polynomial. So this x equals 0 will also make this polynomial equal to 0. So if there is an equality symbol in the inequality you have to include all the zeros of the polynomial so here we included negative 5 positive 3 and the number 0 next problem so pause this video if you want to try this problem out so we want to solve this inequality this polynomial less than or equal to 0 so we do the exact same thing as we did in the previous problem so we first draw our real line Okay, and then uh, we have here, how many zeros do we have? We have x equals negative 5. This will give us x equals negative 5, x equals 2, and x equals 4. So we divide this uh, real line okay, into uh, sub-intervals. Okay, so the smallest zero is uh, negative 5. You have uh, 2 and then positive 4. And again, to determine the sign in this uh, rightmost uh, subinterval, you can just try, for example, x equals 10. So if x is equal to 10, you'll get a positive times a negative number times a positive number. So that will give you a negative product. And uh, since the power of uh, x minus 4 is an odd number, so we know that the sign changes at uh, x equals 4. So this will be positive. Power of uh, x, uh, 2 minus x is odd. So we know that the polynomial changes sign at x equals 2. So therefore, this will be negative. But now, since the power of x plus 5 is an even number so the polynomial doesn't change a sign at negative 5 so therefore this is negative and now we can easily determine our answer so we just choose the negative signs here okay and then uh, since this is uh, less than or equal to 0 so we need to include all the zeros so we need to include negative 5 and also positive 4 and positive 2 so therefore our final answer will be negative infinity to 2 including 2 so this interval already includes negative 5 union with 4 so we include the 4 comma positive infinity moving to our last problem so again we do the exact same uh, procedure to solve this inequality so first we draw our real line okay and how many zeros do we have we have here x equals 0 this gives us x equals negative 1 x equals 2 and x equals negative 3 so we have here four zeros 1 2 3 4 so the smallest is negative 3 so you have here negative 3 you have negative 1 0 and positive 2 so you may write for example uh, e on top of the 0 if the multiplicity is even so the multiplicity of 0 is even so that is equal to 2 and then the multiplicity of uh, negative 3 is also uh, even it's equal to 4 just to remind you that the polynomial doesn't change a sign at these uh, zeros so now we determine the sign at the rightmost interval but again when you plug in for example x equals a 3 you'll get positive positive times positive times positive number so that is a positive number now for the other zeros except 0 and negative 3 we know that the polynomial which will change sign because the powers okay of for example x plus 1 and x minus 2 are add they are equal to positive 1 so here it changes sign at 2 it doesn't change sign at 0 it changes sign at negative 1 it doesn't change sign at negative 3 so therefore we have to choose uh, the negative signs because we're looking for x values that will make this uh, polynomial less than 0 and we'll get our answer in this case so the answer is the, the answer is the open interval negative 1 to 0 union with 0 to 2. It is a strictly less than inequality, so we don't include any of these zeros.
Okay, this is the end of this lesson. If you enjoyed learning this fast method of solving polynomial inequalities, please click the like button below and for more math tips and strategies, please subscribe to my channel. Again, this is Dennis of KO Math. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.